A number of countries uh, across the continent, including Malawi, are grappling with the land issue. Uh, similar to South Africa, land is a hotly contested resource and as a result, a strong factor in many causes of conflict. Now, some of the concerns from the general public in Malawi have been that foreign nationals own more land than indigenous Malawians. The Ministry of Lands has, amongst other things, also been accused of making land expensive to average Malawians, thereby giving an advantage to foreigners to buy the land as they have money. One organization, the Center for Democracy and Economic Development Initiatives, the CDEDI, is on a crusade to reclaim the land from the British-owned conglomerates so that the same should be distributed to the landless people in Cholo and Mulanje. Well, to talk to us about these issues, I'm now joined uh, uh, via Zoom, and we're hoping we've got all of these people on the line. Malawi's Minister of Lands, uh, Mr. Kezi Msukwa. We're hoping that he'll be joining us shortly. Uh, we also have the Executive Director of uh, the CDEDI, Sylvester Namiwa. And we're also joined by Mr. Mankumbo Muntali, who's the Director of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights at uh, Malawi's Human Rights Commission. Uh, gentlemen, to you, thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Wonderful. Perhaps let me start with you, uh, Mr. Namiwa, because uh, in many ways your letters to various bodies, organizations, has sparked quite a bit of uh, debate. Tell us about those letters. Who did you send them to and what's in them? Actually, to begin with, uh, I have to emphasize uh, that uh, after we had uh, political colonization, we moved to economic colonization. Now what we have in Malawi is land colonization. You see, um, you cannot begin uh, talking of uh, basic rights like right to food, right to life, when you don't have land. But uh, the other thing is I need to emphasize is that what defines us as the people of Malawi is the territory uh, uh, that encompasses the land known as Malawi. Um, our soldiers are doing a very good job to safeguard day and night, protecting this territory. But what we have in reality is that the enemy has already taken away the land. Uh, currently, if you go around Malawi, you will not a show that all the same land in our cities, towns, and the countryside belongs to the powerful people. Uh, we are talking of business people. We are talking of foreigners, those people that are connected politically. Uh, we Malawians, uh, the poor and the vulnerable, do not have something can point at as something that belongs to us. Uh, this problem has, been, has reached this extent uh, because of two reasons. Basically, allow me to give you a legal and historical background as what has led to this situation we have today. Uh, you may recall that we used to All be right, a so, British so protectorate. Just, just hang on a moment. What I'd like to do, I just want to make sure that uh, we've also established contact with Mr. Muntali, uh, and then we'll get uh, the rest of your story by way of introduction. But Mr. Muntali, I know that you are... Uh, also a governance expert. And I just wonder if some of the issues that are at play right now are a result of poor governance and weak laws in Malawi. Uh, thank you so much. I think it's been a combination um, of poor governance as well as um, weak laws. I think we have had some reform processes around the, the law um, issues. Um, the past years. I think the latest one was in 2016, uh, where a number of laws were um, um, enacted um, and, 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 and the, uh, they were piloted in a few districts um, with the expectation that um, the learnings that will come from those pilot um, uh, projects would, would, would help in terms of scaling up into other districts. Uh, however, the challenge has still remained that um, in terms of implementation of these laws, um, they, they have been faced with the issues around the uh, patronage, um, clientelism, and issues around corruption. 
as, as, as Mr. Namio has, has, has indicated. So there's a lot of allegations that are around the issues around where people, maybe their land is being grabbed um, by um, those that are politically connected. And then the issues around the land encroachment, or in some cases whereby land is, um, is taken from the people without the due process of compensation. So it's, it's, it has been a context which has been characterized by um, a lot of complexities, issues around politics, and, 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 and also issues around the, the failure to implement laws. And currently, uh, the government of Malawi has uh, um, started another process to review um, the laws that were enacted in 2016. Um, with the process of improving the, the land governance, a process that uh, still um, is underway. And as, as a Malawi Human Rights Commission, we are monitoring it closely um, to, to see to it that um, the issues that are affecting the people, not only people in Chikola and Mulanje, are aptly addressed. All right. So we were hoping to, to get the Minister of Lands, uh, Mr. Uh, Kezi Msukwa, and uh, he had said that he would join us. I'm still hoping that uh, we can still get hold of him because some of these efforts uh, really are land on his desk. Um, let's come back to you, Mr. Namua. You were starting to give us a historical context. One would have thought that uh, when Malawi got its independence all those many decades ago, one of the first things that your country would have sorted out was the land issue because the colonialists had taken the land and, um, and this is a story right across the continent. What happened? Why wasn't the land issue sorted right from the get-go? That's the question that we would have loved to be answered way back. Uh, because what we have is a clear situation where people of Cholo and Mulanje are living with a wound, a wound that was inflicted by uh, the colonial masters. The first point of correction should have been 1964, when uh, we got independence from, uh, from the British. But because of uh, the issue of vested interest, uh, the first uh, president, then Kamuzubanda, uh, decided uh, to pay a blind eye uh, to the challenges uh, faced by the people of Cholo and Moland. Uh, the other second point, the, of correction should have been 1993, 1994, when we migrated, when we moved from uh, Kamuzubanda, uh, Iron Fist rule, uh, the, characterized by the one party to Mad Party. But then uh, we also missed an opportunity. The closest we got was in 1996, when uh, uh, the second president, Dr. Bakiri Muruzi, uh, set up a commission uh, comprising of uh, cabinet ministers uh, to sort of, uh, let me borrow the word audit, to sort of take an audit on the, uh, all the laws uh, governing the management of land. Uh, they did a very good job. They presented the report in 19, 19, 1999. Uh, in summary, I would say that uh, this uh, commission almost nullified all the uh, laws and legislation governing the land. It required, it meant that the report recommended that Malawi wanted to start all over again. We required a complete overhaul in terms of land management. Uh, perhaps something to write about that came about was a policy uh, that was uh, developed in, uh, in uh, 2002, uh, but then very little happened in terms of changing the plight of the people of Cholo and Mulanji. No effort seemed to have uh, done. Uh, because of, again, a legal background of the country. You see, uh, all the time when you want to make attempts uh, to review the land, uh, the British come in as our colonial, colonial masters. They come in as uh, good Samaritans, but with an arterial intention to ensure that uh, uh, their interests are protected. For example, uh, um, Mr. Mondhari made a mention of an another attempt that was done in 2016. There was a bill that was done uh, by the Law Commission. It was uh, presented in Parliament. It was debated on the uh, 14th of uh, July 2016. Uh, in that bill, there was Section 9, 
which to us thought that was the right direction to take in order to liberate the people of Chola and Mulanje uh, from the wound that they have suffered for decades. There was uh, section nine, it was to do with uh, uh, freehold. By the way, according to the laws we have now, freehold simply means free for all, uh, something that uh, you don't have to pay any, anything, uh, you don't have to yeah. transfer that land to anyone. That's what we have in Chola and Mulanje. So uh, section nine says that uh, freehold land shall not be transferred to anyone. So uh, the framers, the drafters, thought of uh, trying to take some land to give back to the people. Uh, they put in a subsection two, which said that uh, those people that should have, that should enjoy the status of freehold land should be Malawians. Uh, assuming that if the land was given to this particular yeah. person, uh, then when he, he was not a Malawian, he should ensure that three years after the effect of this uh, kind of legislation, that person should ensure that he, uh, he acquires Malawian right. citizenship. And yeah. there was subsection three that said that federal You know what, I'm mindful of time. I'm mindful of time, and unfortunately, so I'm going to have to oh, start to you. So, you a little uh, bit. Surprisingly, su yeah. surprisingly uh, that uh, kind of legislation was scrapped. As I'm talking yeah. to you now, if you go to the Land Act, the 2016 Land Act, we don't have that kind right. of provision. Okay. Uh, so, M Mr. so Mr. all this goes... Yeah, Mr. Mantali, uh, uh, let's just get another thought from you, because whilst this, Cholo and Mulanje, perhaps are the iconic issues, or the iconic portions of land that are getting the headlines, but one gets a sense that they really are quite representative of land uh, in Malawi in general. And I just wonder, is this playing out in the urban areas as well, where the posh parts of town, the suburbs and uh, uh, prime land is also being uh, bought uh, from outside of the country? Uh, I think, thank you so much. I think when you look at the whole issue, um, I have to agree uh, with you that um, the issues that are happening in Chola and Mulanje, um, they just give us a picture about what really happens um, uh, in the, the whole country. Uh, recently, the Malawi Human Rights Commission had instituted um, some consultations uh, to find out what are the critical issues to do with land um, after being asked by the government of Malawi um, to um, submit it, its recommendations. Mindful of uh, one of our mandate as, a, as, a, as an independent national human rights institution is to provide recommendations to government. And issues to do with the landlessness, in, in, like, like what is happening in Cholo, came out uh, very clear, especially in our consultations that we did in, in, in the southern region of, of Malawi. Um, there have been actually been allegations of foreigners actually acquiring um, um, huge land, um, um, in, in, even in the urban uh, areas. Um, those are the allegations that I think as a Malawi Human Rights Commission, um, we have also currently uh, looking into. Um, as I said, we have received submissions uh, from different non-state actors. We had called um, non-state actors and, um, and, and, and others to, to give us their views on, on, on the critical land issues. And the uh, CDEC, uh, which um, Mr. Namiwa is also a director, they also provide the submission to Malawi Human Rights Commission for us to look into these critical issues, including um, the com uh, asking the commission to maybe conduct a public hearing into the matter. So currently what the commission is basically doing is it has actually consolidated, it has finished all the consultations that it did, and currently it is working on developing a report which is going to uh, submit to the government with critical recommendations and issues of Cholo Mulanje and other issues that have come out uh, in, 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 in the consultation that the commission has done will be part of that uh, that report which you are going to share, uh, not only with the government of Malawi, but we're also going to share with it, the general public. So it's a report that is expected to be out in the next two weeks um, so that uh, we are able to also inform with, in line with our mandate in terms of what needs to be done. So I think at that stage you should be able to uh, speak much in terms of uh, what, what specific areas need to be looked in. But I have to admit that uh, all the submissions, the concerns that um, Mr. Namioha is, in, is, is actually sharing here have been shared with us. And uh, we have also, in, in, in some occasions, also met him in person, look at them and uh, be able to see it the way forward. Some of them require investigations. For example, there was an issue to do with the, 
um, allegations of some police uh, 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 police brutality against landless people in Cholo mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Mulanje, which the commission is currently also investigating. So we are investigating individual cases, but at the very same time also, we're also looking at the broader picture in terms of how do we influence the law reform. And this is something that is going to come out clearly in our report, which we'll be releasing in the next two weeks and we'll be sharing with the public as well as government. All right. So both of you, um, I'm going to ask you just to hold on. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll start to explore possible solutions because uh, this issue in Malawi is not unique to Malawi. South Africa is probably watching and wondering what uh, we can do here uh, to solve the land question. Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe on the SABC News Channel. And we're taking a look at the land question as it's playing out in Malawi. And uh, we're now joined uh, once again by Mr. Mundali and uh, Mr. Namiwa. Mr. Namiwa, uh, let's start talking about solutions. What would you like to see happening? Because clearly this is a problem that has long historical uh, um, entanglements. And there are influences uh, from abroad that are still uh, very influential. How do Malawians get their land back? Uh, a straightforward issue, we are making three demands. First of all, it is established fact, well documented, that the land was taken away from the locals uh, using uh, um, some sort of gifts. Uh, at some point in time, the people were violently forced out of their own land. Where still these people, they were made to work as, as slaves uh, through uh, forced labor, known as Tangata system. So we are making three demands. One, all the idle land uh, should be given back to the landless people of Cholo and Mulanje immediately. The second issue is uh, the people should be organized in cooperatives they should be managing the tea plantations, macadamia, tungsten, um, and, 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 and what, what, what have you. Uh, the people should be managing those plantations, those crops. Since the state owners have got the financial muscle, they have the factories, they should be buying from the locals. The third issue is that we are looking at the circumstances in, this, the, in, in which the British took the land. It is a tantamounting uh, to inhuman uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, activity. The people suffered uh, some atrocities, so these people should be compensated. Those people that have been uh, hardly hit, they can be identified, they should be compensated. But most importantly, to general Malawians, the British government should make a verbal apology. These are the issues which we put uh, in our letter to President Raza Sakweda, uh, dated uh, December 8, 2020. We included the same uh, to our letter to the Minister of Lands, Kezin Sukwa. At the same time, as uh, Mr. Mundhari alluded to, these are some of the, also the issues we pushed forward to Malawi Human Rights Commission. Uh, justice has to be served to the people of Sholandi Mulanje, and the time is now.